Hello and welcome to the first All Around Azure event series, A Developer's Guide to AI. We are privileged to have with us Venki Vararagavan, Group Program Manager in the Azure AI Group. How are you doing, my friend? Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, thank you, Seth. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so I'm Venki Vararagavan. I'm the GPM for uh, what's called Azure Cognitive Services. Uh, I have been in Azure AI for about three years now um, uh, and st you know, started working with CNTK, for those, those of you from the old days, uh, working with Onyx and uh, sort of the open source community uh, with Azure Machine Learning. And then in February, I moved to become the head of product for Azure Cognitive Services. So it's been a, it's been a big ride. I mean, that's cool. You, you've been around the block, it turns out. Uh, so it, when, we're, when we're talking about cognitive service, because that's what you're working on now. Why don't you tell us about the AI platform when it comes to cognitive services, how it's accessible to developers without prior machine learning knowledge? What say you? Uh, great. Uh, you know, so the core thing with cognitive services is that we're taking some really hard problems that, uh, that sort of bedeviled us for a long time, which is how do you understand speech? How do you speak? How do you um, understand uh, vision? and made them into easy to use cognitive uh, APIs that developers can directly embed into their product to solve a, a, a problem end to end. And so we have sort of four categories of services. One is speech, uh, vision, language, and decision. And the idea behind that is basically these are sort of core brain functions that are just available, built by Microsoft, available to you as, a, as an API that you can just simply uh, embed in, into your solution. We're also starting to do some uh, scenario specific uh, services that really help understand a broader end-to-end -end scenario. So things like Forms Recognizer that really looks at a document, understands what's in it, and gives you and sort of cracks it open and gives you the insight from the document. Or Metrics Advisor that helps you understand how a metric um, of time series data, uh, whether it's anomalous, and if it's anomalous, uh, uh, an anomalous data point, what's, why is it anomalous? What, what is causing it to be ha uh, happening? So we use a lot of AI underneath the covers, but these scenario-specific products, they're really sort of just solving the, pro the problem for the uh, for you, uh, as opposed to you trying to understand how to embed all the different parts together. So if I'm understanding you right, what you're saying is that Cognitive Services is broken into like core things that are AI, like standard AI problems, and then scenario focused ones. Is, is, am I getting that right? That is right. I, you know, I think what we found is that uh, we started obviously with the core AI, uh, a lot of it has comes from sort of our years and years of research that we've done uh, at, you know, at my, at Microsoft Research. Uh, but as we sort of built those out, what we've seen is customers uh, end up solving some patterns repeatedly. So they use OCR to understand what, what a picture looks like, and then they uh, compose that with language to understand you know, what, is, what do those characters mean? What, you know, what, are the, uh, what are the words? What is the sentiment in there? And so the idea is that there are some patterns that are forming all the time. So conversational AI, like building a bot, you know, we have uh, speech and language that we need to build a build a bot, but we've seen it happen so many times that we're actually now making that into a into a product that we can just sort of you know use the bot framework with our uh, with our direct line speech and really pull them together to actually solve the problem end to end, and that is something that you can use directly. So that's awesome. I love the division. It's cool that it feels like you've more from building like uh, little little actual AI parts, and then you're mor morphing them because you're seeing the patterns over and over again. Are you taking? customer scenarios to heart? Are people telling you when to put these things together? Uh, absolutely. A uh, lot, lot of the work we're doing is sort of, you know, it's often the technology tells us what kind of problems we can solve. So it's a lot of it comes from research. We're also getting it from the customer in sort of the problems that they are looking to solve. Uh, and so uh, it is a combination. Uh, when there's new technological breakthrough, we are able to do new problems that customers and we did not think it was possible. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then the same thing, you know, customers also asking us to solve explicitly, hey, look, make increase the quality of the AI in this space. And so we invest in sort of making sure that that's great. So a good example would be translation, uh, where lots of customers have uh, domain specific translation needs that they're asking asking us to do. And so we sort of invest in, in solving that. So speaking of customers, are there, are there customers that you can share with us what they're doing and how they're being successful with these services? Absolutely. Um, you know, a couple of recent customers that we've sort of talked about, uh, I want to sort of cover uh, because they're just sort of new technology that's coming out and sort of shows the the power of the technology. So first, I want to start with uh, RxR. It's a company uh, we actually talked about this company at uh, Ignite uh, last month. Uh, and what we're doing there is using uh, our new vision uh, product called Spatial Analysis that really allows you to understand um, how um, 
how space is being used. And you can see like, you know, where are people in the space? You know, where, uh, what, what are the other items in the, in, uh, in the space? Uh, and the company RXR is a realty company and they've been using it inside their, inside their, um, into their buildings to really look at the the, the health uh, issues that they're looking at today. So they want to better understand, you know, where are people uh, moving through the building? Are they socially distancing? Uh, are they, you know, are they uh, sort of uh, following all the all the health guidelines? And it is an offline thing, so it's not like corrective action uh, in real time. But they're using all this data to actually figure out uh, where are the where are the choke points? Where are people you know getting jammed up? And so then they can reconfigure uh, the the way the um, uh, you, the users of the building are moving are moving through the building. So that's really cool. It's our first time. A couple of cool things. It's the first time we're doing video um, uh, understanding with our AI. Uh, that's that's step one. And two, it's also the, uh, a place where we are starting with the edge first. So this is a place where we are using the the um, the AI in containers uh, on an on-prem uh, sort of device. And it's actually doing a lot of the video processing on-prem and then sending the insights up to the cloud to be sort of managed and sort of looked at the insights uh, to do analytics. Yeah, that's cool. I was gonna ask about that because uh, us, you're probably like videoing people and you don't people don't want that to leave premises. And so that stuff doesn't leave the premises in any of the RxR buildings? Um, no, it doesn't. It's basically what's happening is all of the video comes into the, into the, into the premise, uh, the video is run and then, and some, uh, and then sort of distances and like, you know, you know, on floor five in this corridor, you have X number of people or here's how many number of violations. That's what gets uh, sort of captured and sent up to the cloud to be analyzed by the uh, RxR uh, folks. That, that's, that's impressive. So uh, I know there's probably a ton of other customers, but we have a limited amount of time. I, I'd love to get your thoughts on the future of these AI services for developers. Um, it's a great question. It's sort of we spend a lot of time as uh, sort of in as uh, product management thinking about where we're going to go. Uh, you know, I think of three different uh, vectors where we sort of we want to innovate and sort of get better at. One is in in AI quality. I think you know uh, increasingly we have seen huge improvements in AI quality with these large scale pre trained multimodal models. So things like uh, the Turing work that we've announced before. We have our own internal work uh, around. Uh, multimodal with trans, uh, with translation and language. Uh, these uh, the BERT uh, is another, another example. So, th so these models are becoming very large and they're becoming very good. And the question is, how do you make it super easy for and super cheap for someone uh, like yourselves to use them in your application? So that'll be a challenge that we're sort of working through, which is how do I, you know, compress the model, distill the model, get the AI quality still running and available in a in an API that is super easy for you to use inside your application. So that's one. Two is we want to sort of increasingly look at more and more solving the problem end to end. Um, you know, the, the the there are emerging scenarios as the um, as the industry matures and people know how to use AI. We're beginning to see more and more of these patterns. So you know, transcription, uh, bots, uh, conversation agent, virtual agent. So we'll be looking at more and more. You know, how do we sort of take these scenarios? And sort of just um, solve them with products. So that's that's some of the ones. So we'll see you'll see a lot more of uh, that coming from us. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, really making your day to day experience as a developer super uh, uh, great. So uh, you know, starting with so developer experience. So you know, we are investing heavily in SDKs uh, in all the popular languages to make it really easy to go from uh, instead of just using a REST API and sort of you know, caring about keys and everything else, using a much simpler uh, day to day experience inside uh, VS Code or something like that. And then, the, and then uh, the converse of that is building a great user experience for our subject matter experts who are actually building and managing the AI. So if you want to do a conversation design, dialogue design, if you want to build a voice, uh, uh, sort of the experts and the talent who are going to be helping build that API, uh, building that AI, uh, how do you make a great experience for that? So you think about that as a third third leg, which is the, the user experience. All right, these are awesome three things that, that y'all are working on now. A question that I often get, and I want to I want to pose to you, is how can how can we pro promote responsible AI practice? I mean, what is Microsoft doing to promote them internally, and then how can people using uh, these AI services do it in a responsible way? Oh, superb question and highly timely. Uh, you know, I think responsible AI is. Uh, I think people are increasingly figuring out that this is a super important topic uh, because as AI sort of starts seeping into all parts of our day-to-day -day lives, we we do have questions about what it does, what should it do. Uh, so, so what Microsoft has done is created these six principles that you can see on our website. 
uh, their fairness, reliability and safety, privacy, uh, inclusiveness, transparency and accountability. Uh, they're big words. They sort of mean a lot of things. But let me break it down for you in terms of what it means from a from a uh, from a product perspective. So we think about two um, big areas: responsible development of AI. That is the work that we do in, in our team about how we sort of uh, build the AI. And then the second one is responsible use, which is how do we help our customers, all of you, to use the AI in a responsible way. And so let me break it down a little bit more. So in development, you know, it starts with. Uh, how do you get the data uh, for training? You know, do you get the consent of the user? Do you get informed consent? So you're really uh, being clear on uh, what what is the uh, sort of people know what they're giving the data for. Uh, so for training, there is things like uh, do you get the adequate distribution of data with all the uh, reflected groups? Uh, you know, do we do fairness testing and bias testing? You've seen lots of stories around this uh, around this in this space uh, of people have not done it, and so we are really getting a lot more structured about how we. Uh, run our engineering system to really make our responsible AI lifecycle uh, sort of really uh, good at sort of capturing these issues. So that's one. The second one is now that we've built this model and we know what its model is trained for, uh, trained for, and what it's trained with, we want to communicate that to you as the as the as the user, as the consumer of this uh, AI, because that way you know what it's meant for. So we want to make sure that you don't you're not using you know product review trained data uh, models on people review, right? So we want to make sure that we, you understand what it is that we're giving you transparency on what we've built our model on, uh, you know, what, what our data is, is, and then what are the expected use cases? And then in some cases, uh, you know, where the, where the AI can be quite sensitive in use, we also are incre increasingly asking for customers to actually tell us what scenarios they are using it for, and then approving them. So we're sort of limiting access to some of these scenarios such that we can make sure that the, the technology can be used in the, in the right way, in the right place. So just a one one question when we train our models uh, the Microsoft models that people are using where where does that data come from So um it's an excellent question so we normally get our uh, models uh through sort of synthetics we often make the models um uh, make the data we also collect data um through uh, um uh, we actually purchase data so actually we go and get get the data and then there's publicly available data the one thing we don't do is actually use data from our services um uh, from our commercial services so uh, so that is another place uh, where we feel like the customer trust uh on giving the data to us is 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 uh honored uh, that's awesome like and, and that's the thing like i have seen email threads maybe i shouldn't say where they're like hey our language is it very our services are very good at this language let's pay some people to do some translations for us. And I've seen that like this. And so the, the ethics of we're not just like paying lip service to it. We're actually doing it internally as well. So just to finish up, we've got about a minute or so. Uh, tell us what, what do you want people to go and do today? Uh, so AI is in a super exciting space and it's very easy to get into. So I recommend all of you sort of go to uh, try try them out, uh, uh, you know, whether that's speech, vision or language uh, services, uh, try them out at azure.com slash AI. Now is, do people like is there a free tier to this can people use it uh, absolutely uh, i should mention that uh, okay. yeah when you go to azure.com you can uh, sign up for a free account and then gives you limited uh, sort of uh, capacity to go try all these things out uh, and then once you're you know once you're happy with it then you can sort of uh, use more and i think it's really cool because like i said uh, it, literally you just call the api and things happen and as far as i know and and again, maybe you can correct me. This is one of the few clouds that lets you lift and shift down on premises. Is that right? That's right. Um, we are, we are the first uh, sort of uh, AI services to actually uh, uh, offer our AI in, in in the form of containers. And so our customers are able to build hybrid solutions, able to deploy this AI wherever their solution needs to be run. And so we, you know, over the last year and a half, we've been uh, releasing containers for uh, almost all of our services. And you'll see more of that coming. Well, thank you so much, Venki, for being with us. For those that are watching, remember, go to the AI Fundamental Certification and make sure for the rest of, it, rest of the event, get inspired, get learning, ask questions of all of our live speakers. Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of the event. Back to you.